Haley Joel hey, Osmond is you? here. Hey, What's going on, you? man? Good to see you. What's the hullabaloo? Oh, he didn't have his headphones on, Jim. <laughs> How you doing, man? Jim wanted to play our uh, a soundbite to try to start uh, interviews on the right note. Okay. But Let he got we well, got excited about himself. No, and he hit it early. I, I just like to hit the button. Well, I know you do. I know you got buttons in front of you. <laughs> yes, you oh, do. look at that on the iPad right here. It's so hard yeah, not great. to hit them. They're yeah. right there, begging to be. Now that a lot of attention's been drawn to it, you don't want to hit the button again. Okay, it's for Sam. You stupid fucking cunt. <laughs> That's not the That's not the that from? Uh, from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Oh, that's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. We were me. just talking about for a second before you came in, you're, you're doing this uh, Ted Bundy movie, Extremely yeah. Wicked. And uh, Bundy had this reputation being like this, like, kind of like this guy who was like, of all the serial killers, he was charming, he was charming and handsome, and people forget what a brutal piece of shit he was. Yeah, and you can really tell in in the the few video interviews that are, that are available with him, just the manipulation is going on all the time. I think just one of the most depressing things I've ever seen is when like Jim Dobson is interviewing him, going like, "It was the pornography, right, Ted?" Like they're both just using each other for like they're these, trying like, to find an excuse. Terrible means, and it's just yeah, it's just so dirty and uh. bad. Yeah. So Zac Efron is a nice guy who's a lot better looking than Ted Bundy. So we had to uh, they had to put some some ugly teeth in his mouth and everything because when people said like, "Oh, Ted Bundy was really handsome and charismatic," it's like I don't really see it in this. Film. Yeah. yeah. Compared <laughs> to John yeah. Wayne Gacy, right? Yeah, compared yeah. to David yeah. Berkowitz, hey, maybe. Yeah. Gacy yeah. was a very successful businessman. Yeah. <laughs> he was. I mean, Fine painter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you've decided to take up that cause. Like, you know, these serial killers had some positive aspects to them, too. You met the president's wife one time, and that was Oh, uh, Rosalind Carter, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Secret <laughs> Service got a little uh, chewing out for that, I imagine. Well, he was a little, uh, well, he was like a local, uh, I guess, Democrat or something in, yeah. in Chicago, and the, he hosted, he was like a parade. Uh, it was Rotary Club or something like that, or the, or the Key Club or something like that. Whoa. <laughs> John, See, that was our, photos that was our producer. He had his <laughs> yeah. shirt off earlier and Diamond Dallas what Page. To your chest? Diamond Dallas Page chopped him. Oh, yeah. Ouch. That was earlier today. It's, yeah. it's a <laughs> fine smack to the chest. That's right. So uh, what's this movie about? Um, it, it, it covers the period after his first arrest and his multiple escapes from prison while he continued to try and ex exert influence on his uh, wives' uh, lives, um, uh, even from prison. Oh. And I play a sort of a composite character who is a friend of Lily Collins' character at the University Medical Office where she works and is like, you got to stop taking his calls from prison. Like, he's a bad guy and that sort of stuff. Did, yeah. they, did she believe that he was... Because when they, when they arrested him, he was driving a VW uh, and he had a... like there was, Wasn't there like... A, a no passenger seat or something, and there was rope. Yeah, he couldn't have been more obvious. That's yeah, when they pull. Yeah, and he had like a fake police officer's uniform. Like it was, <laughs> it was pretty obvious. Well, officer, I don't normally have yeah. a passenger, so I took the seat out of the. I'm a car. singing yes. telegram guy. Yes. Yes. I like to have rope and tape in case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and lots of room. Yeah, Ugh. <laughs> man. Yeah. Do you uh, uh, do you have to uh, get yourself out of it? Like when you stop a movie like that. I mean, I guess you didn't have to play Ted Bunny, so you didn't have to go quite as deep into the serial killer world. But still, yeah. I mean, to be a part of it, do you have to kind of not read about serial killers for a while after? It's it's really hard because I, I don't think of myself as someone who particularly enjoys true crime things and everything, mm -hmm. but I still consume a lot of that sort of stuff and with serial and, and actually... Um, uh, some of the movies that our, our uh, director Joe Berlinger did, he covered the West Memphis uh, Three trial in, oh, in the course. 1990s. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's had an incredible career as a documentarian, too. One of the greatest out there. And Those it's are just, great. Yeah. Oh, my God. And just incredible stuff. On the other side of it, when the hysteria is, you know, targets innocent people, it's it's right. really, really crazy. But Although, there are things on Wikipedia I wish I had not written uh, or uh, read. Not uh -oh. read. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> <a historian. laughs> Don't look at that page. <laughs> yeah. There are things on Wikipedia I wish I had not done. Yeah. Read. Read. I just want to Find the person who said that Coldplay is my favorite band when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, Ted Bundy, that's what it should have been in the fucking Gillette commercial. That's toxic masculinity. It is. I love when there's alerts when it's like, this page was edited by someone in the House of Representatives. You're like, oh, what did they change? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you too, also, you're doing a comedy called The Devil Has a Name. Uh, did you get to do scenes with Martin Sheen and Alfred yeah, Molina? Yeah, I did. Not Alfred Molina, but I had a lot with Martin Sheen and with David Strathairn, with Ed, uh, Ed Olmos and uh, Kate Bosworth. It's just an incredible cast. And that's based on a true story by 
about an oil company that was contaminating uh, water, uh, making it radioactive in the Central Valley where everything is grown in California. How is Martin Sheen? He's one of my favorite human beings. Yeah, he really, yeah. I've played golf with him at some charity events before. He's just a fantastic guy. Yeah, really. He's been really a nice man awesome. since he yeah. sobered up. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine the apocalypse. A long time ago, yeah. The apocalypse now, Martin Sheen, was not as pleasant. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, was, he was having a hard time then, I imagine. I think they all were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would imagine that too. I'm glad that they uglied up Zac Efron because the first thing I thought of when we were talking about the Ted Bundy movie that you're also doing is that if Ted Bundy were alive today, like he'd probably be pretty psyched that Zac Efron was playing him. Like if they, if I found out they're <laughs> doing a Sam Roberts movie, to enjoy movie. that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like Zac Efron, that's great. Yeah, I forget. It's weird. Like even Timothy McVeigh, who was at I think ADX Florence before he was executed, he had access to movies and things, and I, I, it's like, and was commenting to his biographer, or some journalist before he was executed about movies he liked and didn't. It's like you just, see just weird on... to think about that. Yeah. Like, the user section of Rotten Tomatoes, like this one did not yeah. work for me, Tim McVeigh. <laughs> yeah, anything about an attack that's been thwarted. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes death row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They shouldn't get to watch movies. It seems weird because there's so many other things that could probably be considered violations of of the Universal uh, Human Rights Code or whatever. But it's like, but you can get those VHSs still. I was like, I was yeah. watching Escape from Dana Mora, Ben Stiller's series. Oh, I gotta about, see that. It's great. Yeah. But like, and and Ben Stiller said he kept really true to the story. Like that was important to him. And they were showing the prisoners in that prison with personal TVs in their cells. Yeah. Which I was like, I had no idea that stuff. Like, lights would go out. It's like time for everybody to go to bed or whatever. And the prisoners who had those privileges had little personal TVs that they I were just I think it watching. makes wow. it easier for the guards, I've heard, too. Like, if they're calmer or if they have a reason to get that stuff, then it makes life a little bit easier for the people who are in the prison. And, yeah, yeah, like, you're less likely. Because if there's nothing to get... Or, or no way to work out and get out your aggression, then the, the guards are probably that's much more dangerous. That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that stuff is good if it, if it helps keep those guys. Safe. Yeah, definitely. So you're super busy. You got these two movies, and then, of course, Future Man. That's right, yeah. Is the big deal. It's Future Man so is fun. And on it, Hulu. That's right. I just saw it, like saw the ad uh, uh, on a screen in Times Square, which is always kind of a crazy feeling. But uh, it's a terrific season. Um, we're to, almost 200 years in the future now. <laughs> I am a holographic AI projection of my former self from the 21st century, and I'm trying to offload humanity to colonize Mars. Smart. So, yes. yeah, I mean, <laughs> so like real life, yes. Yeah. I just like that they take something that's so high concept and then don't take it tremendously seriously. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like they just make a, they take this like super high concept thing, uh, idea and then make a whole show about what a goof the whole thing is. Yeah, and the petty concerns, because like my character is an all-powerful supercomputer, but I'm still obsessed with this one girl that I met for one day back in 2017. <laughs> and I've been trying to clone Eliza Coop and just sort of wrestling with very pedestrian concerns while I'm sort of deciding the future of humanity. Yeah. But that's the way we all would be, right? It is. Like, I, did, I don't know if you saw the movie The Favorite this year, like which is a very funny movie, but it's also kind of a horror movie because it's these incredibly petty, immature people deciding you know, whether certain armies invade France and stuff like that. And it's just like, it's really scary. Yeah. So when the, uh, when the fire, when, when Hulu earlier this week, did you hear what they did with the Firefest doc? I saw that. I when saw they, the doc too. They I probably didn't yeah. know that Netflix was going to do it. That's why they, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were mistake. aware. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> were you, are, are you rooting for the home team now? You're like, holy I, fuck, <laughs> Hulu just came and like completely made Netflix look like a fool. My show's on Hulu. <laughs> I'm on the winning team. I did. I forget what in my, uh, uh, well, one of the football games got boring over the weekend and in our, in my like sports group text and my friends from high school, I was like, Future Man, season two, streaming on Hulu, paid post. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, it's it just seems like an ethical question because they were working with some of those guys who had been advertising the festival who clearly knew that it was going to be a dangerous Netflix, disaster months yeah. ago. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll see how it plays out. Yeah. It's, it's crazy documentary when the talking heads are like, you're like, oh, you're just as bad as the guy who went to prison. Like, everyone is terrible. Like Right, <laughs> right, yeah. The, the, yeah. Further, the further deep you go in, you're like, wait, they're all blaming this one guy, but you were all there, too. Even the bartender that was on the island, he was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't know. That guy immediately knew. He's like, you can't do it, dude. Like, and like, when they show him, like, he was a master, like, businessman from the day that he was selling broken crayons to kids. Like, I think it was an obvious grift from the beginning. Like, you <laughs> yeah. can take one look at this guy and know to stay away. They so. said the Cam food was yeah. good, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> the the picture yeah. <laughs> of the cheese sandwich has become synonymous with everything Firefest was. <laughs> and I just love like the, the the villas. So part of the problem that they had was that they realized that first of all, they didn't have the island picked out before they started selling tickets. Yes. So they start selling tickets, right? And they build oh, up all this <laughs> hype. 
There's the cheese sandwich. They build up all this hype for Firefest. And uh, after they start selling tickets, they're like, fuck, we got to go island shopping, which is usually, <laughs> even for the richest of the rich, a process that can take a couple of years. How much time before that they Four have? Four months. Yeah. Four yeah. months. <laughs> so, so they find this island that's really just like, it's. it looks like a parking it's lot. It's the dump zone of a sandals island. Yeah. Like a sandals. And you could go, you could have Google Maps it before you bought a quarter million dollar <laughs> ticket to go, oh, this is just a concrete Is that how much the tickets lot. were? There were luxury packages for yacht trips and things like that that were $250,000. And I think they just took that money. I don't know if everybody got their money back for that. So for they, that. Oh, that looks yeah. nice. Well, oh, what there's they, a fire hydrant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Bring their dog. <laughs> yeah. What they did was... Was they were like they were selling GA tickets, general admission tickets. How much were those? A thousand dollars, and they sold too many. So they just went on the website and said these are sold out. The only things you could buy now are the villas, which were going for twenty thousand dollars. And so people were so hyped up about this thing that they st all started buying the villas. So now we're in this position where oh fuck, we don't have any villas. Yeah. <laughs> so they got FEMA tents. And that's what you see, all those white tents. Those are just FEMA disaster relief tents. Oh, my God. And that they, was the villa? They yeah. just set them up. And all these people that paid for villas, they get there on a school bus. <laughs> and then a guy tells them, go pick a tent. They're first come, first yeah. serve. <laughs> and there's just- Oh, those are nice inside, though. I get it. Yeah, nice there's a chair, floor. mattresses yeah. <laughs> strewn about. I mean, it's it's- did it's you great. Just remember the email that the one guy sends, like micromanaging the 30 second ad video? And he's like, This music, it should not <laughs> be like Hans Zimmer. It needs to be like the glory soundtrack, but dialed back 30%, odd time signatures, tablas, Tico drums, a sitar. Like, it's yeah. a three page thing for like the music for one, their little island video. However, no yeah. details no about the actual festival yeah. is ever figured out. Yeah. Zero, the only musician that was there was Ja Rule. Yeah. <laughs> there were no and I musicians. didn't know he'd been to prison for tax fraud. Like well, everyone in charge of it had already been in prison <laughs> for tax fraud. Wait, like, so all so all these yeah. bands didn't show up? None of them. <laughs> None of them. Yeah. Not one. <laughs> so was uh people just were on the beach for no reason? They went, no, the no, 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 Jim. Lights. That's yeah. where I must correct you. Yeah. The beach was five miles away from their location. They were not on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> it was not beach property. And by like well, basically <laughs> a concrete wash with no fence and right. no lighting, it's like if you fell off that you would die. Like, right, it's they... extremely hazardous like mm. obstacles there. No fences up. Yeah. Uh, also, there was a torrential downpour when it started, <laughs> just to add insult to injury. Did, but, but were they uh, well prepared for that? Uh, they no. were not. They were not. Unfortunately, the FEMA, many of the FEMA tents were blown over. At one point, he <laughs> lies to this venture capitalist that he has like a million Facebook uh, shares. And he's yeah. like, you can do it. So the guy puts in $800,000 and he sits back and goes, let's go jet skiing. <laughs> like, like, problem <laughs> yeah. solved. Yeah. And, and the documentary shows that the guy who's organizing this whole thing, he told the venture capitalist he had several million invested in Facebook. <laughs> so we're good to go. Yeah. He had about, he had uh, between one and $2,000. Yeah. In Facebook stock. So th is this guy's in jail, right? He is in jail yeah. right now. He's yeah. serving six years. Oh, yeah. good. And once he gets out, he will be doing this exact same thing again. It, because when he was out on bail, he started using the same email list from the festival to scam people again. He Dude. tried to do a VIP ticket scam while he was out on bail. He was yeah. selling tickets <laughs> to the Victoria's <laughs> Secret fashion show. Which you cannot buy tickets for. Yeah. <laughs> which guy? Which guy is he? His name is to uh, the right, right there. Yeah, Billy McFarland. Billy McFarland. Yeah, yeah. And the reason Netflix didn't get him is because he wanted to get paid for being a documentary. And Hulu goes. Yeah, I mean, if we can like throw this guy under the bus, I'll pay for him. <laughs> like, he, he does not look good in those interviews. Uh, I have ne you have never seen. You got to watch this. Watch it tonight, Jim. I will because you've never seen a guy bite his lip in a documentary more times. <laughs> his bottom lip had to be chewed and raw by the time he was done. <laughs> oh and he's sitting God. there, and Ja Rule has this amazing moment where they're showing him trying to pitch this business. And because first, Billy and Ja Rule got together to pitch a credit card, which was also a scam. <laughs> but Ja Rule is on Fox News, and the woman's interviewing him. Actually, yeah, we have, let's listen to Ja Rule on Fox News. We have this clip. Um, and by the way, you can watch this documentary on Hulu, the same place you can see Future Man. It'll probably yeah, be on the same two. home screen. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. They, they work great in tandem with each other. But trust me when I tell you, especially if it's snowing near you and you're snowed in, it's going to be a great weekend oh, on Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is, this is Ja Rule pitching a credit card. We only need to listen to the first 30 seconds. Just listen to Ja's pitch on it. 
up selling more than 30 million meat credit card for millennials. The man himself joins me now, along with Billy McFarland, the founder and CEO of Magnesis. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, ja Rule, you know, so many celebrities become brand ja ambassadors for something ja or other. Why'd you choose this? Uh, you know, it's, it's a very unique <laughs> situation. Whenever you can marry the affluent with the less fortunate, you get the birth child. <laughs> Hi, wait, wait. Which is called hip hop. Yeah. Hip -hop. <laughs> what a great pitch. This is, this is called the credit card. Yeah, this is the credit card, but but you know when you when you marry those two worlds together, you get something very special. How? Where is the affluent? Where is the less fortunate in this? Because this is. Go ahead. Hip hop. Okay. It, it things in a different way because we speak to the less fortunate. We we are the voices of. The I mean, do you have any idea what he's talking about anymore? Jim? Who is the less fortunate? It's like a luxury credit card. For, it is. Like, for, it was, I truly it was, it don't was, know what he's talking and about. And the kid's like, I also misspelled magnesis, but whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, I miss, I think I misspelled magnesis because everybody kept saying magnesis because <laughs> it's with an I instead of an E. But he goes, but whatever. Yeah. Did this credit card do well? <laughs> it didn't do too well. No. It only made, but they used the. Is it still available? Unfortunately not. <laughs> he bought a sheet of metal from China <laughs> and like pressed his credit card down on it. It's like I made a credit card. It's like, a, I mean, he literally like when he's explaining the birth of this credit card, the birth is not in the idea of the function for it or the service that he would provide. It's in the physical. I figured out how he could make a physical yeah. card, <laughs> and then it's how do I make money off this metal card? The guy with him looks genuine, though. Yeah, you talking about Billy? It looks very genuine. Oh yeah, yeah that is that's a face you can trust, right? Yeah. That's Billy McFarland. <laughs> Billy McFarland would go on. To uh, serve yes. six years in jail for oh. uh, wire fraud. fraud and yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see his next venture because you know he'll be right back at it. Right back yeah. out. And here's the beauty of it. So really, even the fire festival, even if it had been, uh, if it had gone over perfect, even that was a scam to really get a mailing list together to launch this app called Fire. And the idea of the app was, it was kind of like Cameo, except instead of like paying people to say dumb shit, you could pay people to do dumb shit. Like you could, it was it was booking celebrities. Right. Like you would bid, if Coldplay would be on the app, and you would say, I'm going to put $10,000 if you'll come play my bar mitzvah. And then Coldplay would be on their ver end of the app, and they'd say either no or yes. <laughs> That's the function of this app, right? So Firefest is a total disaster, and the guy goes to jail. Ja Rule somehow stays out of jail for Firefest and launches an app that provides the identical service that Fire was supposed to provide. <laughs> and well, wants to try to figure out how to do a new festival. He does oh want a new festival. Yeah. He'll do it. I know he'll do it. <laughs> I've never seen anybody fail as much as in, in so many different genres as Ja Rule and still survive. Like his rap career ended, his business career is a joke, and he's still just like the man, right? Do you think he's, uh, what What ruined his rap career? 50 Cent. It was a 50 Cent. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 50 did cent. he lose that fight? Unfortunately, in that rivalry, 50 Cent did come out on top. He was victorious. He was victorious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in the uh, World versus Fire festival oh, and yeah. Fire app, Ja Rule also ended up on the losing end of that. I wonder how much they paid him. They say, have they said how much Hulu paid him? Uh, That's no. a good question. Yeah. No, they didn't. But Hulu yeah. expressly in the doc called him a liar. Yeah. Like, they were like, you are a liar. Yeah. They must have said. And he goes, in the doc, he goes, he goes, if I'm lying, tell me one thing I'm lying about. Yeah. And then they do a music montage yeah. of all the things he lied about. <laughs> wow. I love the one quote that sort of like sums up the era, too. He's like, you know, it had to be a pretty brilliant idea to fail so big. It's like, like yeah. no, that's no, not how it works. No. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds good. That's yeah. a great meme. Like, yeah. But it's not true. It's like the bigger the lie, the more they'll believe it. Yeah. No, that's also not yeah. true. <laughs> Apparently, he asked Netflix for two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mm. You know, the, this whole we don't pay people for shut up. You want the guy in your show, pay him. But as it turns out, the documentary that Netflix had is being produced by these guys, Fuck Jerry, who are a marketing company <laughs> that were the marketing company behind. Firefest. Fire <laughs> Somehow they stayed out. Yeah, it's like it's like a fuck Jerry production. Yeah, like the fire festival disaster. And as you're watching, it's yeah. like clearly all these people knew exactly how this was going to go, and they kept it going. It just makes my brain hurt when they go through. It's like, and we were the geniuses that figured out if everybody just posted an orange square. 
it was a genius social media like takeover. Yeah, that was what they were paid millions to do. And it's like, like you're not. We a... got all these models to post an orange square. Like, right. That's our stuff. We're genius. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We have a new idea for you. <laughs> we're gonna do a green square this time. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's Ugh. <laughs> it really is great though. Uh, and Jim, once you watch it, watch it tonight because maybe will. we'll uh, talk about it tomorrow. Maybe we'll do a deep dive into it they tomorrow. They even kind of use the same font. That is hilarious. Isn't it great? Yeah. Hulu really <laughs> fucked them up on this one. Yeah. I mean, they probably um, didn't know that Netflix had one planned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just I mean, a, it just is a, a mistake, mishap. right? Jim, they put it out unannounced <laughs> on a Monday when they it w- was announced that Netflix was coming out with it on Friday. <laughs> oh, that's bad luck. <laughs> that's bad timing. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor, so, uh, poor Netflix. Poor Netflix, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever? Uh, we, we, I was thinking about you last night because I was watching. You know, we were they're texting. P- <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Oh. <laughs> they're promoting this movie Glass like crazy, and it just occurred to me. I was like, "Do you sit there and you go, M Night? If you're going to bring all these universes together, <laughs> you can't give me the, a couple bucks to it jump in work. and go like, hey, by the way, there's also some dead people yeah. over here. <laughs> the 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 the, uh, the B plot in that. Yeah. Right, right. Like it, it they can't just pass work. you there in a diner. There can't be two Bruce Willis's in the same reality. Oh shit! So that would be that would break the the world. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that would really fuck it up. If It'd you be just, very confusing. If you just showed up and you're like, Doctor, this is what you're doing yeah. now. Well, it's like on Entourage. Like some people had played minor roles in the early seasons, then had become famous on their own and then appeared as themselves later and it's like this is a, like a looped universe right you like, can't do this yeah. anymore <laughs> do you see Bruce at all uh, it's been a while but he's he uh, he's called over the years um, I know his daughters who are really nice and I see Knight from time to time too I saw him at a charity event like uh, last year or something but yeah they're uh, they're good guys we have uh, we have good memories together yeah of yeah. course yeah. how long did you step out of acting for I came here in 2006 uh, to study experimental theater at NYU, and I was here till like 2011, not going back to LA at all, and had a dream that I could live here all the time, but everything casts and works in LA, so I'm splitting between the coasts at this point. I see. So you, you, live, you, you still want to be here. here? Yeah, I still have a place here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And was that was part of that because you were like, I just want to, if I'm going to be in this world... I need to step out of it so I can actually go back into it. It really, and at, especially at that point in my life, because LA, I, I think, can be a kind of a, a like a soul killing place at that point in your life if you're in the industry mm-hmm. and everything. And I know plenty of people who lived there and, and did fine and had wholesome experiences. But I really loved being here and having friends that weren't in the entertainment industry and just sort of having the anonymity in this city that it somehow provides, even though it's one of the most populated city in America. Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I live here, but whenever I go out there, I'm like, why don't I live here? It's so pleasant. <laughs> it's warmer. It's warm. It it's is. lovely. Yeah, but if yeah. you lived out there- 26 degrees here, I'm like, what a fucking dope I am. <laughs> if you lived out there, you'd just be depressed because you'd be like, I'm in LA, I'm gonna start booking stuff, and you wouldn't. <laughs> That's not true. I've been really working hard. <laughs> I know, I know. You've been you've been really plugging away. You should see me. I've been in the mirror really doing it. <laughs> yeah. Taking all of my favorite movie scenes. <laughs> is that what you do? I do, and I pretend that I'm the people in the movies. You do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, Jim- how did you end up uh, finding that your 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 uh, enemy that was in the forest, <laughs> and he was locked? He was he was trapped in there for so long. What did you do? Oh, I said uh, she got up. <laughs> great ass. Okay, that's not the right. <laughs> One of line. the great movie lines. <laughs> do you know the story with that? Right, like no. he, the character was written as a cocaine yes. addict, and then they cut that out. So he's just screaming for no apparent reason. It looks like he's like, over the top. Yeah, but he's not. Oh, so, he was, so they, but he had already started shooting scenes where he's kind of where he's on yeah, cocaine. Yeah, they had a, that whole subplot that that was part of what broke up their marriage, and that he has this <laughs> huge coke problem. Is yelling, and then they just removed it from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> and then, and then Al Pacino is stuck basically doing that for the rest of his career. They're like, no, we want coke out like that. I like that yeah. mode of Al Pacino. Like, yeah. It's like in Dog Day Afternoon, they cut out all homosexual references, but they just had Leon show up yeah. in a robe. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? For what? Does it make any sense? now <laughs> why would you do this yeah that's that's a big thing to take out because it looks like he's just overdoing it and you're like what are you doing theater acting for in a movie <laughs> what happened <laughs> to al yeah what's that why is al doing that he's a good actor why I, is he because what he said what do you got he's like oh al, too loud i'm right here <laughs> what does he like take the take his own tv out of the house when she's cheating on him or something like that's a really kind of psycho scene yeah like why movie. would you do that if you're yeah, yeah. a sober-minded body yeah. oh, i'm taking this with me i don't 
don't know. Yeah. I guess he must be really mad. I yeah. guess it's the 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 rage that's making him. Yeah, it's making him do Solving all Solving crimes gets him really excited. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Poor Al, his little lifts. I've only seen him. <laughs> Adorable little lifts. Just want to pick him up and hug him. <laughs> yeah, I do. I love Al. <laughs> little lifts. <laughs> I think Al's probably okay with his height at this point. He's got he enough. He's, he's got enough working for yeah. him yeah. that, like, you know, he's Al. He's on stilts as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> he's big Al. Yeah. <laughs> when did Continued people... success <laughs> with tiny <the tainy> feet. <laughs> <laughs> when did people start realizing that you were a good comic actor? I don't know. I, I got really lucky and right out of college did a mini series called The Spoils of Babylon with uh, Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig. Oh, and wow. that community of people is super cool and did you ever see a Kristen, lot working with them. You ever see Kristen Wiig on the Joe Schmo show? No. Do you remember the Joe Schmo show? No. What was that? It was a reality show where the oh. one guy, did, everybody was fake except for one guy. I heard about That's that. That's a brilliant idea. Didn't Dude. it turn into like something kind of interesting where they, they were pranking him but then they sort of started to like him or something? Is that that story? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So like the first season, every other season was terrible because it didn't work but the first season worked perfectly because the guy was so dopey. Why didn't it work after that? Because people were on <laughs> People it? figured it out and they would have to change the show halfway oh through God, and they would have that. to adjust. But Kristen Wiig played a psychiatrist uh, on this show, the Joe Schmo show. Wow. Matt Kennedy Gould was the first Joe Schmo. I was addicted to it. I've watched it many Dr. times Pat since. The Qu- oh my god, that looks great. And she, yeah, <laughs> but like Matt Kennedy Gould was such a likable kind of r- as regular a guy as you could ever find. He delivered pizzas for a living. He was just a simple dude, and everybody kind of fell in love with him. But then at the end of the show, even the guy who was supposed to be his best friend, he was like, I'm cast to be his best friend, so I'm going to go become his best friend. They all had to be like, no, this is all fake. And he's like, even you, Brian? Oh, no. He's like, yeah, my name's Greg. You know? Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> like, it was a real... That's crazy. Real, he was like, what, what, what is going on? <laughs> what year is that? Uh, probably... Natasha Lajaro was in that, right? No, she was on Part one of the... Two? She was on the second one, okay. I think. Wow. Uh, I think the first one was 2001. 2003, 2003 is that yeah. right? Okay, 2003. Yeah, wow. I knew it was the early 2000s. Oh, ran for 10 years. I'm sure those later seasons were just as good. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And I don't know that they were able to pump out a season every single year. Yeah. When, it, when you say it ran for 10 years, I believe it was three seasons over the course of That's 10 years. That's true, yeah. <laughs> ran yeah over season the three, of, episode yeah. nine, you're right. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, I was addicted to the first season. I had to get the DVDs because, yeah. it, I mean, if you can find it. I don't know where it is anymore because nobody talks about it. It's got to yeah. be somewhere. But it's the best reality show ever. because it, it 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 worked. Do you have, see if you can, yes, what is going on? So this is the moment when he finds out <laughs> that the whole thing is uh, is a ruse. Oh, no. And that everybody, but I mean, it was so like, Schmo. they hired a guy to basically be Puck yeah. from the real world, and his name was like Huck or something like that, <laughs> or or Hutch. Hutch was his name, and he's like, I'm Hutch, and like I'm the guy who like puts his fingers in Pedro's peanut butter. You know, like it was it was so stereotypical, like cast every yeah. reality show guy. But f- poor Matt Kennedy Gould, he just didn't see it. He coming. looks bright. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that vacant stare, doesn't oh, he? God. <laughs> what, Matt? Everything. What is going on? What is going on? And they tried that to looks crazy. So so what they tried to do what they tried to do and it didn't like he ended up having really hard feelings about it because what they tried to do was they made it so that he didn't win the reality show. So he didn't win the million dollars or whatever, right? So he lost. But they were like, "Oh, good news. This was all fake and you win." And oh, he was like, so he did win the money. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's just like, he's just, his emotions are fucking, you know, bananas off the walls because they gave him the money. That's good. And they said, like, you win. You're the big winner, even though you thought just you were your a life loser. Is a lie. Like, but yes. everything here was a lie. And this guy is not really your friend. <laughs> and this girl doesn't really have a crush on you. Oh, and it's all been, oh, we, made it, we made it all up. But they go, but, but Matt, 
we did it for you. <laughs> and then uh, he's like, whoa, 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 what? Jeez. <laughs> the girl having a crush. It's not a good thing to do to a person. No, no. that sounds like the, like the creepy stuff they do at Guantanamo where they'd like throw a guy a birthday party just to mess with his head. <laughs> yeah. and like That's like almost worse than waterboarding. Like, right. It's they do so that? psycho. Yeah, like every, just psycho and stuff. Then four like, days later, it's another birthday party. Yeah. Like, what? I don't understand. Yes. And why is this happening? It, Three o'clock in the morning. Wait, they threw this on, on when it was his a guy birthday? they were torturing. Then they all of a sudden were like, "It's your birthday!" and saying it to a person who probably has no con- concept of American birthday parties or the sun, oh. just to be crazy. Yeah, just yeah, just to, yeah. for fuckery. They Little wouldn't let people sleep. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do they give them birthday food? Probably gave them a cake. cake. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all bad, right? No. <laughs>